Hello, and welcome back to the Scary Stories channel. We appreciate your interest in our channel, and if you like what you hear, be sure to like and subscribe down below. Tonight's scary story is about an old funeral home that a friend of mine purchased. He was planning on restoring it as it was in bad shape. It was going to make a beautiful home, though. I went to his house one evening. We were just going to take it easy and watch some TV. The house was built in the early 1900s. It felt so strange for some reason being in the house. Strange sounds would appear out of nowhere with no explanation. Things would move around from where you thought they once were. This made me think I was crazy. It seemed as if there were more people in there than just us, even though we were alone. I didn't say anything and just figured it was my imagination. A few days later, he called me to invite me over to a barbecue. Of course I accepted the invitation. I got to his place. We were talking outside while he was cooking. We were talking about all the renovations he was, quote, attempting to do to the house. He said there was always something keeping him from getting anywhere with it. He said just the other day he bought five gallons of new paint he had just picked up. He had to leave for the weekend to look at another house in the next state. When he returned, the paint had popped open and was dried out. It was unusable. Tools would constantly come up missing. This is just to name a few things. This got me thinking there was something else in the house that didn't want it changing. That night we talked for hours about everything. He was telling me a story about this old 1890s crank phone he had as a part of his antique collection. He said that people still use them illegally to fish by shocking them. That phone was one of his prized collectibles. That night it was really late and he told me just to crash on the couch rather than try to drive home. I did. That night I heard a phone ring twice, but that didn't make any sense. He only had a cell phone and he hadn't ran the phone wiring in the house yet. This strange ring wasn't his cell phone ringtone either. At this point, I knew something was going on. The next morning, he approached me first thing. He told me someone was trying to call me last night to check my phone. I looked, but there was no calls or any missed calls in the log. I told him that it wasn't mine. His eyes got a little bigger. He said, that sounded like the old phone of mine but it's not hooked up. He said that strange things happen in this house all the time. If you talk about something, it happens shortly after. Then he went into the history of the house. He said that it used to be a funeral home when it was first built. They would prep the bodies upstairs, then have an access between the first and second floor that they would lower them down for the services. He knew there was something in the house but he didn't want to make a big deal about it. I think he didn't want to scare me, but little did he know how much places like this really intrigued me. I was an avid watcher of the paranormal shows and even had some equipment of my own. At this point, I was obsessed. I had to investigate this place. I finally got the guts to ask him if it would be possible, and he said, absolutely. He would like to know also. We made a plan. We thought tonight would be the perfect time to do our little ghost hunting. Little did I know, I would get much more than I was seeking. This place would not disappoint. The time came. I was at my place charging and packing all of my equipment. I was so excited. My friend called me around 5 p.m. and told me he was ready to stir things up. Now it was on. I was almost an hour away from his house, so by the time I would get there and set up, it would be dark. Perfect. I arrived and started unpacking the IR cameras, tripods, EMF meters, etc. Immediately the lights went out on that half of town. I was prepared for anything though. I had lanterns, flashlights, IR illuminators for the night vision, the whole nine yards. Actually, this was great. If I get any EMF, it won't be from the electricity. I heard my friend asking me what I was doing from the next room. I was explaining what all I was setting up. 
I was talking for about two minutes when I realized he was outside getting some batteries from the garage for his lantern. Who was I talking to? It was his voice. I frantically hit record on every piece of equipment that I had. I wasn't done mounting everything, but I had to get it running. He came in and asked me why I was so excited. I explained what had happened. At this point, it was all hands on deck. He was helping set up. He told me he just bought these batteries a few days ago, but they seemed to be dead already. I checked the bulb thinking that was the issue. Nope. They were dead for sure. What caused this? Just then, my flashlight died, and my main 8mm camera went to half battery on the indicator. This was the biggest pack you could get for that camera. It usually lasted for 20 hours or more. It hadn't even been 10 minutes. Something was going on. All my equipment was being drained. The voice recorders, 8mm camera, motion sensors, and even the lantern was dimming at this point. The EMF meter was going crazy as well. None of the batteries held up, and we were dead with no equipment besides the IR thermometer. Nevertheless, the house was still active. Moments later, he heard a familiar voice that sounded like his sister. She lived four hours away. We both ran to the door and looked in the driveway. No vehicle besides ours. That's strange. Where was she? He called her on the phone. She told him she was just sitting at her house. She said she could barely hear him through all the static. He said that he would just talk to her tomorrow. We kept hearing voices of people we knew, people close to us. At this point, I was even getting scared. We decided to go out and grab a bite to eat. Hopefully the power would be back on so we could charge everything by the time we got back. Also, to be honest, the house might settle down a bit before we returned. I felt like I bit off more than I could chew, but I wanted to capture something. Little did I know, I got what I was looking for, and then some. We got back after dinner. I wasn't sure if I was ready to go back in or not, but did anyway. The lights were back on now. It seemed like things had settled down. The house was dead quiet except for the refrigerator. I started charging all the batteries. Nothing else happened that night, but I stayed the night just in case. The morning came, and I was dying to see if anything had been captured. It didn't take me long to answer that question. Twenty seconds into the IR footage, I saw myself going to check a motion detector that was beeping. I didn't see what had happened the night before as it was pitch black, but there it was right after I got to the sensor. A towel that was hanging on the back of the kitchen chair was knocked off towards me on the floor. It was there the whole night and was hanging back up by the time we got back from dinner. We never noticed it had moved until now. The goosebumps immediately rose on my arms and neck. The still pictures showed orbs everywhere, hundreds of them. Then the most unnerving evidence was caught from the voice recorder. At the same time the camera picked up the towel being pushed, a voice said, Get the hell out of our house. I immediately showed my friend. We both decided to leave and go to my place for a while. Surprisingly though, he was okay with it. He said he was glad to finally know some answers. He ended up buying another house shortly after this. Years later, the house will not let him finish the renovations without problems. Slowly but surely, it's coming along. Now, however, he is hearing things in his new house after he moved all of the stuff in. He wants me to come investigate the new property as well. I have the assumption that it is possibly one or more of his antiques that he has collected through the years that is causing this. I guess time will tell. I'm looking forward to a night we can go check out the new place. I'm going to treat this with a little more caution now, as I know how the last time turned out. I've investigated a lot of places, but nothing came close to this. I'm hoping he can find peace in his home someday, but in the meantime, I'm kind of excited to see what I might dig up. If a spirit has enough energy to physically move objects, 
and be heard by electronic devices, what exactly are they capable of doing to human beings? This is a good question to ponder as you are going to sleep tonight. So as always, good night. Sleep tight from the Scary Stories Channel.